Hello friends and dome lovers, Johnny here. It's good to be back making another video. I know it's been a while. I've been working on a really big long video. It was going to be a kind of dome builder's guide volume two to follow up from my last big guide video. But I realized that it just makes a lot more sense for me to separate things and basically make a series instead. So this is going to be the first installment of that series. And we're gonna be covering the deep frame method where you can use full size one by four or two by four, one by six or two by six to create a deeper frame dome and you don't need a table saw. In the next installments in the series, we're gonna be covering a wide variety of topics, including deck building, doing dome windows, roofs, different kinds of cover material, etc. And as you can see, we're not on a boat right now. I will have a full update video for you guys soon talking about what me and Camille are doing, our future plans and our future projects because we do have some really exciting stuff coming up. Remember that you can get our full dome and zone plans on our website as well as full 3D models and tons more information. You can find all that at trilliumdomes.com. And once again, thanks for all the support. It really helps us to be able to do more experimental projects and keep creating educational material. If you have any suggestions for the future episodes of this series, please leave them down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you haven't seen our first Ultimate Dome Builders Guide, I really recommend that you go back and watch that because we cover a lot of the basics. Okay, glad to have you along. Let's get started with the deep frame method. Your first step toward building a dome is almost always gonna be making your jig. Now, how many jigs you have to make depends on which of our plans you're working from, but this dome in particular only has two unique panels. I'm gonna kind of breeze through this section because I covered it in the first dome builder's guide in depth. And we also have an illustrated dome builder's guide that you can get for free on our website and comes with all of our plans. But essentially you mark the bottom length of your panel on a straight line and then you use the side lengths to make a makeshift compass and then using screws as your pivot points you scratch in that length and where the two arcs meet you make another point connect those dots and you have a perfect template of your panel Okay, so now we need to make the rails for our jig. We're gonna start that by cutting some blocks at the bevel angle. I'm using my digital angle finder and here's how I get a good reading. You close it all the way and zero it out. Then you open it up to 90 degrees and zero it out again. Then you can set it to the angle from the plans and it'll basically read just like your saw does. So now you can use that to set your saws or scribe a line or anything and it'll be accurate. Since I'm cutting like 12 of these, I'm gonna set a stop block so it'll make it faster. And I just cut these about eight inches long with the bevel angle at the end. So for the actual rails, I'm just using the same material that I'm using for the frame, which in this case is one by four, it can pretty much be anything. And I cut those about six inches short of the length for each side of the panel that I'm working on. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just gives it some space on the corners to work with. So now I'm attaching these blocks that we just cut and what it does is it puts that rail at exactly the bevel angle that we're looking for so that when we clamp our struts to it, it puts everything in the right orientation. What's great about this is that we can double check our work as we go. We can build our first panel, check it, and if something's not right, if there's a length off or they don't fit together perfectly, well, we can go back and adjust it. It's no big deal. So you will have the opportunity to check your work. It's not like you're just cutting everything and hoping that it fits together in the end. Now with the rails clamped down right on the line, we've pretty much got our jig set up and now we're ready to rough cut some lumber. The lumber that we're using for this project is just regular hem fur framing lumber that you can find at any box store or lumber yard. Yes, you can use different kinds of wood and yes, you can absolutely use different sizes of wood for the same exact method. Generally what I do is find the longest length of any one of my panels and I rough cut all my struts to that length. In this case, it's about four feet so I can get two four foot cuts out of this eight foot piece. Make sure to double check your specific plan because they are all different and make sure you're giving yourself enough slop. Then you can set up a stop block and it makes everything go a lot faster. 
Something I like to emphasize with building these structures is efficiency. Because we have a lot of repeatable components, we can get a lot of work done really quick and really efficiently by using production techniques. So now we're gonna take our rough cut struts and we're going to clamp them to our jig and we're gonna butt all these pieces into each other reciprocally so that one end is hanging off long and the other is butting into the next piece. So now that we have our struts butted together on the ends, we're gonna cut them to fit. First thing I do is make a couple of orientation lines just so that we can stay oriented. So now what we're gonna do is called a compound cut and it can be a little intimidating for people, but let me just explain. You got two orientations on your miter saw. The first being the miter, which is on the face of the table that your piece rests on. And the second is the bevel, which is on the face of the fence, which you push the wood up against. So we're gonna set these one by one using either a bevel gauge or your digital angle finder. So with everything firmly clamped to your rails, you're just gonna take your gauge and hold it against your work pieces. And because it's more ideal to cut the one by four flat, we're gonna flip the orientation of the angles that we take. So if you take a horizontal angle on your jig, that's gonna be your bevel, which is your vertical angle on the saw. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the miter cut. So vertical angle on your jig will be your horizontal angle on your saw. And in this case, we're just gonna cut off the very end of the board. So now we can take our strut back to the jig and see if it lines up. You also wanna make sure that it's on your template lines. And if you're happy with how it fits, then we can start setting aside some more struts and gang cutting that initial cut. Now I like to set up a little stop lock while I'm doing this so that you can cut two at a time and do it a little bit faster. So using this method, you're gonna repeat the process and cut the initial cuts on all three struts so that you have them butting into each other and one end hanging off. If you find that something's not lining up right the first time, that's okay. Just make a little pencil mark, adjust your saw, and do it until it's right. Now for the first one of each panel, I usually just screw it together in the jig and then I'll pop it out and cut the excess off with a handsaw. You can do all the panels this way, but I usually just do the first one so that I can double check all the measurements and make sure everything's good. Simply line the handsaw up with the strut in front of you and slowly start cutting. If you plan to do this for all the panels, you'll get the hang of it after a few cuts. Now is a great time to double check all your long point measurements and use your bevel block to make sure that the bevel is correct. If the panel is out more than a 30 second, you should really consider going back and adjusting your jig to make sure that everything is right on. So at this point, we've got three stacks of struts that all have their initial cut on them. And now we're gonna do the final cut. So usually what I do is just take a pencil and mark it while it's in the jig. And then we're gonna repeat the same exact process that we did for the initial cut. The only difference being that this cut needs to land on a specific spot on the board. So I'll show you how we do that. It's likely that you'll be setting your saw the opposite orientation of how you did the initial cut, but essentially you're gonna repeat the process you did before where you use the angle finder on the jig to set your saw angles. Now, once you have your saw set, you're gonna line it up with that mark that you made and make a cut. Then before you move your piece, you're gonna to wanna to set a stop block on the other side. This is gonna allow you to push the initial cut against your stop block and get the same exact cut every time. And it's really easy to adjust it. If you find that your piece is a little too long or too short when you take it back to the jig, just tap the stop block with a hammer forward or back just a little bit. So you're gonna repeat this process with each strut, double checking them on the jig. And when you're done, you should have three piles of struts that are ready to go. These struts can now be moved somewhere else to another table and someone else can work on putting them together while you're working on cutting the other struts. Just make sure that you don't confuse them. And I also recommend making two or three extra of each strut 
just in case something breaks or is really warped. Okay, so screwing these together is really straightforward. The length of the screw depends on the material that you're using, but I like to use these GRK R4 structural screws. They have the sheer strength of a nail, but um, all the benefits of a screw. Now these screws are really just to keep the panels together until you assemble the whole dome. That's where the strength really comes from, is the strut to strut connections along the length of the strut. It can sometimes help to set a block on the table to push the struts up against while you screw them together. And then you can just go to town. Attaching the panels to each other is also quite simple. You can use screws or you can use through bolts, nuts, and washers for a little bit of added strength. But either way, you're gonna line them up and attach them together with clamps and then screw or through bolt them as you go. Once you make your first panel of any type, if you've already got panels out, it's a good idea to just line the first one up where it's gonna be lining up on the dome and just make sure everything fits together. In this case, there's only two panels. So I just line my hexagon panel up with the pentagon panel and make sure it lines up good before I make a bunch of them. If you have a group of people, it's pretty amazing when you get everybody on the same wavelength pretty easy to get into production mode. You can have one person cutting struts, one person putting struts together, and then another person putting the panels together. And before you know it, you'll have all your full panels made and put into groups and ready to go. Now all we got to do is make a few special panels for the doorway. So almost always the special panels are going to be just a partial of a full panel. In this case is a hexagon panel. I'm basically going to split in half by adding another strut down the middle. So you can see that I'm measuring up the side of the panel and that's based on the plans. I make a mark and then I set another strut on top to intersect with that line in the corner. Now just mark the back side of that strut and you'll know where to cut the panel to make room for it. In this case, I clamped it and I undid the screws. And because you only need to make four of these, I just use the handsaw to make the cuts. Now when both sides are cut, you can put that middle strut in place. It doesn't really matter where you attach it, as long as it's lining up with the jig underneath. So once you have it all attached, you can use the handsaw again to trim off the excess. And for this particular model, you're making two mirrored pairs. So then you can attach them together and these will make up the doorway. So assembling a deep frame dome is basically the same as the beveled method or any other method. You're just going to screw the panels together in the configuration that it shows on the plans. I could definitely see an argument for using through bolts and nuts with washers as opposed to wood screws for these connections, or you could do both. So this is a fantastic way to build a dome without needing to use a table saw and being able to achieve the strength of a full depth framing member, plus having the insulation potential as well. So thanks for watching this episode of Domecraft. And in the next installment, we will be talking about deck framing. Please put any questions or thoughts in the comments below and I will happily respond. Okay, take care.